Hello, I'm Beth the Builder, and it's hot as shit. <laughs> so, suddenly, randomly, two days, it's 90 degrees and also like 100% humidity. So, I am doing low energy things because I don't cope very well with heat, especially random spontaneous heat. Anyway, so I figured I'd do some carving because guess what? I got a Dremel flex shaft, so... <laughs> so, I have that all installed on my WEN rotary tool. I uh, watched one of Jordy's carving fusion videos about how to install a Dremel flex shaft on a WEN tool, or on a WEN rotary tool, which was super helpful, because I was like, wait a second, am I doing this right? What am I doing? It's pretty, it's pretty simple, but he, you know, he has a little short video about it, which was helpful. So yeah, check that out if you have a cheap rotary tool, but you want to get a better flex shaft, because that is the more important tool. Okay, so I figured I'd keep in theme of carving tiny 3D animals, and instead of doing an owl, because I've done that, and I'd like to try that on a bigger scale um, wood carving, I'm going to do a tiny rhino, and I'm going to do it maybe even smaller than my owl, and try and get like some really cool detail in it. We'll see how it goes, <laughs> and maybe we'll do a couple things. Unless I get too fucking hot, and then I'm gonna go lay, on, lay in my basement and groan <laughs> because, dear God. So that's why I look particularly shiny because um, our AC is not great. That's a whole, why am I talking about that? It's because I'm hot, <laughs> my brain's melting. We're talking about a rhino. So even on a silhouette of it, like the things that are gonna make it look like a rhino are gonna be like legs and then a horn and, with its snout and then like tiny ears. So even as a silhouette, if I was doing it more one dimensional, that those are the things you want to focus on. But even, but then even more so doing it 3D, thinking about what protrudes from the front and the back, etc. all the things. Okay, so remember safety first, make sure um, you got a good mask and you're in a semi well ventilated area, put some goggles on so you don't get shit in your eyeballs. And I always wear ear protection because I'm also a baby about that. Maybe I'm just a big baby. No, those are my two things, okay? I don't like being hot and I have sensitive ears. So, I mean, fight me about it. Now you know best weaknesses. So, that's what we're gonna do today. I told you I'd be back um, every few weeks doing more carving because I wanna get better and that's how you get better is you just try and practice and stuff. Without further ado, let's carve and stuff. <laughs> So I am starting off with a big old cylindrical bit. I mean, it's not really that big, but it's probably one of the bits I have that has the most surface area. And that's really what you want to do to start off because that's when you're going to be removing the most material to get a kind of base shape. And then I made these grooves and then I connected them by kind of turning the bit um, left and right and connecting them and smoothing out, yeah, his, his stomach and his back kind of hump and everything. So yeah, starting off with a bigger bit and then as you go into detailed work, obviously that's when you would use smaller, more skinny, more, de more detail-oriented burrs. Thank you. 
And I tried to stop every time I would change to a different bit or kind of pause to see what I'm doing and show you guys what it looks like so that you can kind of see the stages of it coming together. So um, this is when I switched to a very fine tipped skinny tapered bit. It's really, really great for detail work and the more you use it, the more detail you get and the more that thing looks like what you want it to look like. So I thought maybe I was gonna be done. I kind of set it up to be like, look, this is a finished product, and I was wrong. I was not happy with the front of his face. I think he looked more like hippo-y. So I looked at it some and figured out I needed to thin out his snout and make his horn really defined in the middle of his face. So a horn doesn't span his whole snout, it's a horn in the middle of his head. Think about, you know, like a unicorn horn. Where the heck is that at? It's in the middle of their forehead. It's not their full, it's not their entire forehead. You know, that's just practice um, of looking at things from different angles and figuring out what needs to change to get that thing to really look like the thing you're going for. All right, and then the last one I ended up using is again, kind of a cylindrical bit, but it's much, much skinnier and smaller than the first one I used. And I broke this bit, so I thought it was a new bit. I'm pretty sure it was, but maybe I'd used it once before. Maybe I was just being too aggressive, and I couldn't find it in my water. I don't know where it went. It must have gone flying or something. I'm glad I was wearing goggles. Um, it didn't hit me or anything like that. I have no idea where it even went. But that's why you wear goggles. <laughs> you don't want that shit in your eyeball. Okay, so I'm all done for the day and I've done two tiny animals and they're both about 50% smaller than my owl that I did. Um, I hope this open window and the wind isn't gonna be a problem. I had to stop for a bit because we were in a tornado watch and it got like super crazy windy, like potential for 80 mile per hour winds. Sort of stop and go bring some plants inside to make sure that that shit didn't blow away and like, I don't know, take out a person or something. So um, with really teeny tiny carvings, you can kind of get away with not having a shitload of detail. So I have this little stone wolf that I bought I'm at like a little fun gift store or whatever. And he's howling. I'll get a better picture of it. The amount of detail on it is really, really simple, but the shape of it is right. He's got ears, his head is tipped up and he's howling. And you don't need a crap load of detail on it because you know, oh, it's a tiny wolf. So with tiny carvings, you kind of just need to get the base shape. And then you can add like texture. So like feathers or fur, or like with my rhino, I just kind of want to make like, show the lines of like, rhinos aren't furry. So you just have the lines of like where, you know, like legs meet your, like the top of your shoulder. If you look up cartoon pictures of rhinos, you can see like, there's lines of where you'd put like wrinkles, where their back kind of like flows into like their hindquarters. So those are kind of the lines you want to look at. You don't need to put in like a crap load of detail um, because that's not what you're going for. This isn't like supposed to be, well, I mean, I guess if what you're going for is real realism, I mean, don't look at me, I don't know. 
But when you're going for just a basic shape, getting the idea of that thing, you don't need a shitload of details. So don't get hung up on like, I don't know, specifics, I would say, especially when you're practicing, which is kind of all that this is for me right now. Um, I like doing it. It's fun to create a little stone creature. And boy, how do you, does this Dremel flex shaft like fucking rock? Oh, ooh, a pun. Oh my God. But it's amazing. It's seriously upping my game. Bits can like really jam inside there and then I can get much more much more like intimately close to what I'm carving. And yeah, bits don't fly out. They're not getting loose. It's just so much better. I am really, really pleased with it. Thank you to my mom who bought me one. It was like a late birthday gift. This is totally upping my game. This is not expensive. My rotary tool was 20 some dollars. This guy, I think she said it was like 30. They're not expensive. So like, this is the way to go for sure. So much better. Ooh, speaking of bits, People have commented and said that like I carve really close to my fingers and I've been like, oh, that freaks them out. I don't know the coarseness of my diamond coated bits. I will look it up and put it here for you guys. I, I used to be kind of concerned about them skipping and hitting me um, and it's happened and like it doesn't even like scratch me. Like even when my hands are wet, it doesn't even leave a mark. So, I mean, I imagine if you like really jammed it into your hand really good, it would hurt, <laughs> um, but it's not like a wood carving bit. It's not, it's just a different thing. They've never even left a mark. So um, fear not. I wouldn't be concerned about that if you want to get into rock carving and you're worried about the, especially the flex shaft, like it being so close to you. I think as long as you're wearing goggles, protect your eyeballs, they're important, and a ventilator, I think you'll be okay. So those are kind of my safety tips but um i wouldn't worry about the, hitting your hand you could wear gloves for sure to really protect you but i've had it happen and it really is not a big deal versus like when i've been wood carving that's way more serious i wouldn't mess around with that i have a big old v-shaped scar on my hand from when i sharpened chisels and then i actually like, jammed a chisel into my hand and it like I, I had like maybe i like hit like a nerve or something it was pretty deep and it it bled pretty good. The same with wood carving bits. They are just way more aggressive than this sort of thing. Obviously, I'm only speaking for what I have. I'm sure you could get more aggressive, more coarse, even bigger diamond coated attachments, bits, etc. So yeah, um, I went outside and I just scavenged some rocks. I was looking for rocks I could scratch with my fingernail. Did I already talk about this? Whatever. Because that's, that's a good test of like how soft of a stone it is. And if your fingernails can scratch it, your, your diamond coated bits are not gonna have any problem with it. So this paler one that I used for my rhino was really, really soft. The darker stones I've carved, they are a little bit harder, but I, they're still not the hardest thing imaginable. So I have some rocks like this around my house, and this is obviously huge, but um, they have a specific pattern to them, and they're very, very hard. They are difficult to carve. Um, versus sometimes you can pick up a rock and just kind of tell. Like it feels kind of slaty, it feels sandy, um, and then you can take something, you can even take just like, you could just take a bit with you if you're gonna go scavenge rocks and just see how easily it scratches the surface of them. If you didn't wanna use your fingernail for some reason, or I don't know, you have delicate fingernails or something, I don't know. When I've worn fake nails, obviously that's not a good test because they are much harder than normal human fingernails. But um, anyway, so um, I have uh, rock beds around my house. We didn't put them in, they were just landscaping around the house with flowers and plants and stuff in them. And it's just river rock. They're varying in sizes. Some are super big, like this guy, and then some are really little, like obviously this is very, very small. So they run the gamut, and I've identified some of them of like, I don't wanna carve that, I know what kind of rock that is, and this one seems fine. So I am not great at identifying them because there's like a bajillion rocks out there, and there's different variations, and it's, it's, it's a whole thing. I should probably get like a book you know, and help helping identify rocks, that would be useful. But for the most part, once you kind of start picking up, you kind of, I mean, if you care about rocks, and you've been collecting rocks a long time, like I have been, you know, you kind of get a vibe for it. And then especially once you get carving, you kind of know like what things are going to be useful, what things are going to be far too hard or not worth your time. 
but I like the smaller ones because I think they just more quickly with very little removal of stone become what you were hoping it to be versus a much bigger rock. Obviously there's more material there. You're going to have to work longer on it and harder on it to get it down to what you're thinking it should be and what you want it to look like. So the smaller stuff I think is really good for practice because you don't have to spend several hours on it. Um, you can do this for a couple hours and get a couple practice things out and and actually see, you know, like your vision of this thing. I think that's the way to go when you're beginning and, and trying to um, practice. On my elephant, I used my chalk pencil, but on this lighter stone, you couldn't even see the chalk. So that's where I did use a Sharpie or some really, really fine tipped, um, whatever they're like calligraphy pens or whatever but they're black you know and that i could actually see on this paler one so that was why i did that otherwise the chalk pencil is totally the way to go um i did however have to carve you know you have to carve the sharpie away so if you don't want sharpie somewhere don't put sharpie there because it's, it's not going to come off i feel like this is a total success this looks like a friggin rhino this looks like a tiny elephant i'm pumped so yeah get yourself a dremel flex shaft it's so much better i can't believe it took me this long to get one i'm so glad my other one broke because this guy is amazing i love it it's so much better and then um yeah other tip of the day is probably just i don't get bogged down in like too many details especially when something's small you just have to get the idea across everyone knows what a fucking wolf looks like everyone knows what an elephant looks like or a rhino or an owl okay everyone can like get those images so like the elephant i was less i was a little bit concerned about um part way through because it is a very specific shape and it has kind of a funny shaped head and everything so i was like uh oh is this gonna look like anything and i it does i like it i think it turned out really cool and my rhino the same thing like you know part way through i was like why does this not look right and then i narrowed out his snout and really like defined his horn and that really, really helped. Like just, and that's where like just looking at it from different angles and being like, does that look like a thing? What does that look like? Is useful. And then look up cartoons of thing, animated animals, whatever the thing you want to carve is, because that's really, really helpful. Because it, it's just simple. It's simple images. It's simple shapes, and you can wrap your head around that. Versus like looking at a realistic rhino or a realistic bird is like. Ugh, it's very intimidating and yeah like this little stone wolf like I paid money for this and it's so simple and it's been polished um, I think it's quartz so it's kind of this purpley cool wolf guy and like it's so simple like I could carve this right now I feel like maybe I will maybe I'll be the next video <laughs> I'll re I'll duplicate this tiny wolf okay I hope this was helpful to somebody keep carving Get yourself a Dremel Flex Shaft, that's the way to go. And yeah, go and scavenge some rocks. So I have a couple patrons now on my Patreon, which is freaking awesome. I love that. Thank you so much. And special thank you to Ajax, who is my first higher tier patron. Thank you so much. My God, I'm very, very thankful. So special video thank you to that person and yeah you could go check out my patreon it's uh, there's a link to it in the description below where you can support me very directly but otherwise keep carving you guys are great thanks for liking and watching and supporting my carving practice i like that a lot i feel like i'm definitely maybe better at rock carving but i'm coming for you wood carvers no this isn't please don't challenge me i this is friendly. <laughs> but I'll have a new video next week, and thanks for watching.